In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear friends, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, it is incredibly awkward to be able to celebrate Mass in front of a camera, but knowing that you are on the other side, it brings me joy. And so, just a, a word of wisdom, uh, just a thought for us as we enter into this Mass. I said this last time, but as Catholic Christians, we worship at Mass. We don't just watch. And so when you are watching, don't just watch. Worship as well. So when, when we usually sit, please sit. When you usually stand, please stand. When you usually kneel, please kneel. And when, whenever there are responses, please respond. Because as Catholics, we worship. We don't just watch. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain 
that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is the grace of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. By the words of the Gospel. Okay, so uh, today is not Sunday when we're celebrating this Mass, um, but we have to pre-record it. Um, so getting into the Sunday spirit before Sunday is a beautiful thing. And like to have um, our teens being able to read and minister and sing, it's just, it's bringing me a lot of joy right now. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for worshiping with us. And I, I think today... So I guess one thing that I've been doing a lot as a priest, not being able to talk to people one like face to face, is I've been doing a lot of phone calls, like phone call spiritual direction, phone call counseling, phone call just talking about the Lord. And like one theme that I've heard over and over and over again, and especially with myself as well, is we're all bored. Like there's a lot of boredom going around, and there's a lot of days overlapping into days, overlapping into days. Like Monday overlaps into Tuesday, overlaps into Wednesday, and it just becomes, it becomes a blur. And so people just trying to be able to, and all of us trying to be able to have Jesus enter into our quarantine on a daily basis is hard because it's boring and because it's a blur. And St. Peter, it's beautiful. Casey and Keelan both read um, words of our first pope, words of St. Peter, who he's saying, guys, don't worry about it. You, you need to realize Jesus is risen from the dead. He is victorious. And, and not only that, you get to be part of this incredible, amazing, epic story that you are a part of this and that every single decision that you make, no matter how small in this quarantine, is enabling us to grow in the future, that every single decision matters. Um, so there's this guy who lived in the early 1900s named... Jan Tiranowski. Jan Tiranowski was a, a really good man who had a heart to be able to just, he wanted to travel, he wanted to go on adventures, he wanted to change the world in a huge way. Yet when he was uh, very little, his mom got very sick. And so he wasn't able to grow up the way he wanted to, to be able to go on adventures, to be able to change the world in a big way. He had to stay at home and take care of his mom for all of his young adult life and into, into his adult life as well. And so he was quarantined to the small Polish town that he was from. The Polish town is called Wadowice. And so he was basically quarantined in this small town, taking care of his mom. He became a tailor. He lived a very simple life, but he never forgot the fact that he desired that, that epic life, that he desired to live an epic story. And he realized that that epic story is lived in Jesus Christ. And so he lived that way as a tailor taking care of his mom, just living quarantined within his just small town of Vadovice. Yet he would pray, he would go to adoration every morning, he would go to mass, and then he would work. He would take care of his mom. Very, very simple life. But people saw him, and they saw something different about him. They saw that he was, there was, he was living a, a life of joy, of fervor that people wanted. And so all of these young people, young adults, people in their 20s, 
came to him for spiritual direction, for learning more about the Lord, for just wanting to have what he has, which was joy and peace and fervor in the Lord. And so there was this one person in particular, he was in his 20s, his name was Carol, who grew up without a mom, without a dad. He just lost his, his parents and he, he was very directionless. And he knew that Jan was a man who had fervor and who had love. And he started learning about the Lord. So much so that Carol became a priest because of Jan. And not only that, Carol became a bishop. And not only that, Carol became a cardinal. And not only that, Carol became Pope John Paul II. Carol Wojtyla became Pope John Paul II. And not only that, he became Saint John Paul II. All because of one man, Jan Tiranowski, and Pope John Paul II said himself, I wouldn't have been a priest if it wasn't for Jan Tiranowski. So what does that mean? Oh, a lot. That means a ton. The fact that if it wasn't for this man who was quarantined in a small town, but knew that he lived a great story, that he lived an epic story in Jesus Christ, that we wouldn't have had St. John Paul II, that we wouldn't have had his amazing theology of the body, that we, he, we wouldn't have, communism, the wall may never have fallen down. Gorbachev said that Mr. John Paul II was the number one reason why communism fell in Russia. And so here is this incredible thing, this fruit that came from a man, a simple man who was quarantined to his own town, but knew that he was living an epic story and every single decision that he made mattered. So, I don't know if you knew, but we have, at the parish, we have two rectories, like two buildings where um, the priests live. So, we have rectory number one, which is the bigger rectory where Father Jerry, Deacon Pat, and seminarian Andy live. I call it the fortress. But then there's the other smaller rectory where me and Father Derek live, which I call the cottage. And so, whenever you enter into the cottage, whenever you walk in, you see on the wall, a, like a collage of pictures, a collage of paintings of saints. So we have on the collage, St. Therese of Lisieux, Blessed Pure Georgia Frassati. We have Our Lady. Um, we have a bunch of pictures into a collage. I'm not telling you this because I'm really good at decorating. I'm telling you this because whenever I walk into the house and I see that, I don't just see, oh, these are the saints that lived an epic story. That I walk in and I walk into and amongst these pictures, knowing that I am in the midst of this epic story rooted in Jesus Christ, and every single one of my decisions matter, that they have a ripple effect. And so my invitation for all of us is to realize, no matter how bored we are, no matter what, if the days are like a blur to us, that every single little tiny decision matters. And that you are, even if you were quarantined in your house, like Jan was quarantined in his village, that your decisions can lead to greatness and can lead to holiness. So don't be afraid of that. Guys, you are living right now in your homes, no matter how annoyed you are with your family, that you are living an epic story. So don't miss your scene. Dear friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us turn our hearts and our prayers towards our Heavenly Father and pray for the needs of the church and for the entire world. People of God, to always reflect the deep love of the resurrected Christ and to find new ways and new energy to preach the gospel, shepherd God's flock, and share the good news, we pray to the Lord. For the community of nations to provide encouragement, hope, and practical help to all who are suffering through the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all the baptized to hear their call to religious life or to minister in the world as lay people and respond with a generous heart, we pray to the Lord. For all who are unemployed and facing financial difficulties, for help in finding the resources they need and opportunities to use their gifts, we pray to the Lord. For all in danger of hurting our planet or its inhabitants, that they may be mindful of the fragility of God's creation and become conscious shepherds and careful stewards. We pray to the Lord. For all suffering from coronavirus, for those who ask for our prayers, and for all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, that they may find hope, joy, and healing, including Alex Goron and Joe Flanagan. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved departed, marked with the saving cross of Christ to find eternal life in God's presence, including Tim Wolski, brother of Sina Naja, Mary Ann Rasmussen, James Gerke, Vince and Robert Barrett, William Keenan Jr., Thomas Richard Gaughan, and all victims of the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. I'd also like, also like to add an intention um, for we have all of our teens ministering today for this Mass, but especially for high school seniors um, at Maine South, anywhere that we know um, there's suffering that is going on in their hearts that they're not able to celebrate from the four years of work that they've been able to, they can't celebrate the way that they want to. And so to pray for the confidence in all the hearts of our high school seniors to know that the Lord will work through that suffering and mold it into something good and true and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise for your blessings in our lives. We ask you to hear our prayers and answer them in accord with your most holy will through Christ our Lord. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
would like to invite forward Gabby Romano, one of our senior teens who will be reflecting on the gospel and her life of faith. Good morning. My name is Gabby Romano and I am a senior at Maine South. Today it may seem difficult to find hope. During this worldwide pandemic of the COVID-19 virus, much has been taken from us. People in nursing homes can no longer have visitors. Spring athletes have had their seasons ripped from them. All theater productions have been stopped. Schools have been shut down for the rest of the year. Stores are running out of supplies. We are running low on medical personnel and the scariest of all, people are dying. No, not only are they dying, they are dying alone with family or loved ones unable to be by their side. If I could pick one word that stands out to me from the readings today, it would be patience. Patience is something we all need to have in our lives, especially during this time of fear and uneasiness. Jesus is the ultimate example of perfect patience. Jesus suffered for us and our sins. He died a slow and gruesome death for us. He was mocked, hit, spit upon, crucified, and he endured all of it with patience. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. To be honest, when this stay-at-home order first started, patience was the last thing I had. I went through many different emotions. At first, honestly, I didn't care, because from what I had heard, the virus was not killing people my age. I felt as though I was invincible, and I had no way of getting the virus. Looking back now, I can see how completely selfish that mindset was, but I know it wasn't just me who felt that way. I believe almost every teenager felt that way at the beginning of all of this. Then I became very angry because all I wanted to do was go out and see my friends. I didn't understand why I was being told to stay at home all the time. I felt like I was being punished. I then realized that it was not a punishment at all. My parents were actually trying to help keep me safe. Now I understand the impact small actions have on other people. I know that there is a small chance of me getting the virus, but I can have it and transmit it to people that are more vulnerable. I would never want to get my grandparents or parents sick, and me staying home and following the order greatly helps them. The stage that I've been going through the most, and currently am going through right now, is sadness. It has been very hard to cope with things recently, especially with how fast information is changing these days. Getting told I cannot finish my senior year with my friends has probably been the hardest part for me. Not being able to graduate and walk across a stage like I have dreamed of for so long is heartbreaking. No longer being able to see my friends at school and probably never seeing some of them again because college will be starting soon is another thing I am struggling to accept. I am also involved with the spring musical that was supposed to take place these past two weeks. And not being able to put on the show for everyone and make new memories before I leave Maine South saddens me. I missed all of the traditions of the last show and will greatly miss the love the PA wing has given me the past, these past two years. When I think of all that I am missing, I'm filled with immense sadness. The second reading filled me with a different emotion. I see that this is not all about me. This is more about us. Although we do not know when this is going to end or when things will be back to normal, we need to put our trust in God because he will lead us to eternal life. Christ suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Reading and reflecting on these words gives me hope. Hope that I can endure this with patience. I can look to Jesus as he modeled this for me. And on the days when I just cannot do it on my own, I can look to Jesus to carry me. This is what he wants to do for each and every one of us to carry us in our suffering, because we are not in this alone. We are not alone when we miss our friends. We are not alone when we are full of anxiety. We are not alone in our tears. And we are most definitely not alone when we die. Jesus walks this road with us always. Thank you. Let us pray. 
Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me.